Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Eli. And uh, I'm David. And together we make games. It's a thing. Uh, <laughs> we're making a VR pack. Of, uh, it's a VR pack. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, we, we're trying to get into some kind of like streaming of our work stuff. Seems like a nice way to like show what we're doing and also get people to talk about what we're doing. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know. <laughs> So we're doing, we're kind of doing like a practice recording here. Uh, I want to do some UI work. Oh, this thing is crazy. Uh, trying to do some UI work to make our main menu for our early access racing game a little bit more uh, like pleasant and animated specifically. Right now it's it's like functional, but you just kind of jump between screens instantly, and it's pretty pretty ugly. <laughs> uh, so yeah, David's been looking into UI stuff in Unity a little bit. He's got some kind of introductory knowledge of it, right? Yeah, so, so I, I do the music and sounds for our games, and I've right. been like getting into learning the implementation, implementation side of things. Uh, so, yeah, Eli is teaching me a bit. Okay, so um, we're going to start off just looking at what we have at the moment. Uh, because this is a VR game, we have to have some kind of calibration thing here to start. We don't have to, but I want to for now. Uh, mm-hmm. So we're going to skip this. I'm using the mouse to control this right now. Normally, you'd be using your face. Uh <laughs> But, you know, I, I, we don't, I don't want to be working with the headset all the time. It's, it's a pain in the ass. Uh, so we're just going to use the mouse for now. Uh, daily challenge is a thing that's like, okay, so this is a procedural content game. So it makes up tracks uh, randomly. Uh, daily challenge gives you a different one each day. If you don't feel like waiting for the next day, you can also pick other track and then just pick a date. And it'll give you the track for that day early. So we'll pick the one for today. Let's see what this looks like. Uh, this loading bar was super inaccurate until very very recently yeah. i finally fixed it it was driving me insane it would just like fill up immediately and then sit on full for like the whole load process and you would just tear your hair out uh so this is the beginning of our track here we're inside of this weird cage thing uh weird hamster ball kind of like the thing in uh, was jurassic world oh yeah yeah <laughs> i haven't seen that movie i feel like i should i don't know whatever uh so we have this track that's generated, and there's a bunch of checkpoints. That's pretty straightforward. There are boosts we can get. Uh, good times. It's a racing game. So we're going to go down here. And we're going to go through some checkpoints. These little blue things that are floating, the arrows in them, are uh, boosts. The yellow ones give you an extra slot to hold extra boosts. Jump over stuff. This game is kind of very aerial for a racing game. That's like the big idea to it. And, uh, you're basically trying to spend as little time as possible on the track. Um, Lots of in-air steering. Yes, all kinds. Uh, we can also use our boost whenever we want to, and that's a big, uh, it's a big thing. You kind of boost up in the air and go really high, but if you're too high up, then you miss the checkpoints. Hey. We get our time. Uh, okay, if we go again, we get a leaderboard over here with our other times too. But you know, we're just, we're just gonna be talking about on the main stuff menu. today. <laughs> so that's the actual game. Now we're gonna look at you know this stuff. <laughs> uh, so. As I said, this menu works. It's got pages you can go to. It's a video option. Uh, there's only one right now. Later on, we'll have <laughs> actual video options. It goes all the way down to Sad Face. Nice. Uh, and all the way up to Superfly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, again, you know, even just for the sake of early access to kind of give like an immediate sense of polish, uh, which I think is important. I've definitely heard a lot of just, you know, negative things like if it uses the built-in Unity. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Built-in Unity anything. Uh. Yep. It's like, oh, look, they it's not done yet. This, this doesn't have uh, doesn't have the level of polish I'm trying to pay for or whatever. I don't yeah. know. It gives bad first impressions. So we're trying to make sure that there's at least a visible level of polish on the stuff that we're presenting, even though none of it's done yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, make sure that we care. <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, we need to replace all these instant transition jumps between the pages with something nicer. Uh, we're going to go with something pretty simple uh, because I want to get it done <laughs> right now in this mm-hmm. one video. <laughs> uh, but if we do our work correctly, then it should be easy to make it nicer later on. That's Yes. Uh, I'm sure this applies in like every kind of design stuff, but that's a huge part of programming and game design and stuff like that. You have to be working on the stuff you're doing right now, but you also have to be working on the stuff that you're not doing yet. Mm-hmm. And just be uh, aware of the changes you're going to have to make later. Yeah, and even if you don't know what they are, you have to be aware that they might come up, and it's, it's <laughs> this whole crazy thing. <laughs> it's like Yomi levels in uh, in chess, except I'm terrible at chess. Okay, so 
the basic fundamental idea here for this menu is that we have a few parent objects and they're all uh, enabled individually and each one of them is one of our pages. So it's very easy for us to just turn these on and off in code. And that's the way that we currently switch through uh, from one page to another. Okay. But that looks ugly because there's no partially enabled option. It's just on or off. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need to do something a little bit more elaborate. Uh, but hopefully not too much more elaborate, okay. because then it'll just be a pain in our own ass, and that's no good. Um, so basically, we're going to add another container. There's, there are already containers that we can use to enable and disable the whole thing at a time. That's good. We're going to keep that. Okay. Uh, but we're going to put each one of these containers inside of another container, uh, which has a little bit of extra control. It's like one more layer of, of abstraction. Okay. So we're going to go to our canvas and make an empty uh, since this is since this canvas is a UI object, our empty has a rect transform instead of a regular transform. Mm -hmm. This is like for a UI stuff, and then any 3D object uh, is regular transform, which is like 3D stuff. Okay. So we're gonna make our UI object, and we're gonna call this uh, main activator. Uh, and this is gonna be our general format for all these. Um, we're gonna make sure it's in the center. Also, we're gonna turn off. Uh, these animated materials. Oh man, where is this button? <laughs> there we go. Yeah. That thing is crazy. Oh, this skybox looks nuts in the scene view, and it changes when you zoom like this. Hmm. No idea why that happens. Doesn't look all shiny <laughs> like that in the game. Whatever. Uh, <clears throat> so we have this main activator. It's in the center of our canvas. We're going to take our main group and put it inside of that. Uh, this is basically the same thing as before, but just with an extra an extra layer, so we could disable this parent one also, and that would do the same thing. Okay. Uh, but, whatever, yeah. So, the same thing for all these other ones. Get empty, we're gonna copy it twice. Custom activator. And then a replay activator. Oh my god. <laughs> Talking, typing, <laughs> easy at once. Nope, easy at alone. <laughs> As you can tell, very difficult together. I call that group instead of activator because I was talking about how difficult it is to talk while typing. <laughs> oh. And so are, uh, these are container elements, right? Yeah. Okay. And I, now I'm <laughs> putting things in the wrong place too because I'm like getting myself into a hurry. Okay. So replay group goes inside of replay activator. Uh, custom group is inside of custom activator. And then where is my options activator? Here. Let me go there. Okay. So now, we are back to pretty much how we were before, but with one extra layer. So we have these activators, and inside of each of those is a group with the actual items in it. Um, so this activator now, each one of these four things is going to hold a script. And this script is going to say, okay, I have this certain set of UI elements in this layer. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it needs to know that whenever it turns on or turns off, it needs to make all of those things appear or disappear kind of sequentially pretty in some way or another. Mm -hmm. uh, and because this is a script, we can write it once and then use the same thing for all four of our activators. They can all behave the same way with different objects that they're pointing at. So we are going to make a script. We're using C Sharp for this project. People like to complain about C Sharp and JavaScript, and I don't. <laughs> care uh, <laughs> but you know they both I, make games yeah they do uh, I've been preferring C sharp it seems like unity is generally moving towards C sharp so especially later on it's probably going to be better to just go with that uh, honestly even now just because they've announced already like they're going to eventually try to make it just C sharp for the sake of like coherence mm -hmm. uh, so you know maybe it's better off just go ahead and do that now uh, menu page activator it's gonna be the name of our script uh, doo -doo -doo. And get rid of these comments that Unity gives us because we already know how these functions work. Uh, okay, so this script needs to have a way to reference uh, the items in the menu. And all of these are going to be UI elements, and since they're all inside of that canvas, they're all rect transforms. Okay. Right? So they're all UI 2D transformations. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to have a list of these. Um, so that we can tell it which ones to point to. Dude. So uh, public lets us uh, lets us serialize it, so it shows up in the inspector. You mm -hmm. can also mark it with a with like an attribute, that, whatever. 
similar things. Somebody might say that this is a bad idea because you could accidentally reference your public thing from somewhere else, and this is a whole whole discussion about coding practice and whatever, but we're not doing that, people who are yelling at me over the internet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, we're making a list of things, and we are going to call this items, whatever. No, we're going to call it transforms, because that's more descriptive. Uh, now, if we go back to here, we're going to select all four of these things, and for all four of them, we're going to add that script to it. Okay. Uh, main page, menu page, activator, donk. Now, each one of these has this list that we can add to, uh, and we can give it all of the main items that are on their page. So for the main group, our items are going to be the title and then these four buttons. Okay. Uh, oh, so each container will have its own. Right. So they're all running the same items. script. Yeah. Okay. So they're all running the same script, but that script just has a space for a general list of stuff. Okay. So we can give them their own separate ones, and then each instance of this menu page activator will do something slightly different, but we can edit them all together. So let's see. We have title. That's one. We have play oh, daily. Heavy. That's another. Uh, this custom replay is a container object that has these two buttons, so they're mm -hmm. like horizontal. This is like divs yeah. in uh, HTML. Uh, and that it's using similar like, nah, it's not, it's not quite the same thing, but it's a similar style of layouting where you have like. Horizontal yeah, I've definitely rows noticed and... similarities between like the web dev yeah. stuff that I've done and, and this new UI system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they, it seems like they're definitely taking a lot of lessons from that, which is cool mm -hmm. because web dev probably is, you know, one of the most like mature forms of UI design yeah. at this point, just because of how incredibly common that is. Uh, so anyway, we still have these other ones we need to fill out. So we're going to turn off our main group because we're already done with that one. We'll look at our replay group instead. Uh, this one, I think we only have. We only need to worry about these three things. Like th this is a row here, but we're just gonna we're just gonna treat those as one thing. Um, okay. Honestly, I think that when this menu shows up, these won't even be visible yet. It's not until you select something else, so it's mm -hmm. really not a big deal. Do -do -do. Uh, so magic trick now. Instead of dragging these in one at a time, we're gonna lock this. So now, even if I click on something else, that inspector is still gonna be the one that we already had before. Okay. Uh, so we're looking at our replay activator, and now I can select the browser, which is the container for this whole thing here. Mm -hmm. uh, watch play, which is the container for these two things, and then also the back button. This is just like regular control click, uh, and then I can drag all three of these at the same time. Nice. Oh. <laughs> uh, sometimes the order when you do that, they just come out and like like shuffled. I don't mm. know. I don't know why that is. Okay, so the order is important here. Uh, it potentially because it might have to do with the sequence that they show up in. Okay. Um, but we haven't told it what this list means yet. So okay. Yeah. For, yeah. You know, uh, it could be anything. <laughs> this could just be random objects that we like a lot. Okay. So then custom. This is going to be a similar case. Okay, so we're gonna say this guy, these two together, probably. Are they the same? Yeah. So this date picker is all of these guys together. Oh, I can't move them around <laughs> because he's uh, he's part of the layout thing. Sure. Yeah, but yeah, those yeah. are all together. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we do the same thing as before with this lock. So we have instructions, and then we have date picker, and then we have play, and then we have back. And all of these will go into our transforms list. We will uncheck, and we will hide, and then we will show, okay, and then we have this last one. Same lock again. So here we have the title, we have the setting display, we have the editor's note, and then we have this other tool tip. And then a back button. I only have five. So each one of these lists has a different number of items in it, mm -hmm. which means that when we make this thing behave, it needs to be able to deal with that mm -hmm. in a way that's reasonable. Um, that shouldn't be... Oh, that shouldn't be too bad. Do, 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 do. Okay, so now we're back. We have our awkward like drag-and-drop thing mm -hmm. <laughs> it's taken care of here. Uh, we can start writing this script. All right. Doot, 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 doot. Okay, so this script 
needs to have uh, needs to have a property that's like, am I enabled or am I disabled? Uh, and then this the menu script that previously was just turning on and off these game objects will instead mark this flag as like, you should show, you should hide. Okay. Um, we're just going to do a public thing here for that so anybody can just access this this property. This is potentially unsafe, like I was mentioning before, but this is a very small self-contained thing and I'm, just, I'm not worried about it. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to make a bool. We're going to call it activated. Do to do. It's going to be false by default. That's kind of already the default value for a boolean, but whatever. Uh, so now we need to have a method for this to be animating. So like at the moment, we just have a yes or no, like is it turned on or is it turned off? Mm -hmm. So this is no better than what we had before, um, even if we did like hook it up to like do stuff at this point. So we need to give it a way to be like counting time to animate a little thing. Okay. Uh, so we're going to give it a floating point. This is not going to be a public thing because nobody else needs to know what this timer is. This is just internal use. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just going to call this uh, anim timer because uh, it's the timer for the animation. That's all it's doing. Now, we need to make it do something depending on whether or not it's activated. Uh, so if we're activated, we're going to do something, and if we're not, we're going to do something else. Do to do. So if we're activated, uh, anim timer is going to increase, um, and we're going to increase it by delta time. That's like the amount of time since the previous frame. So if we do that every frame, then it'll count up by one second at a time. Okay. Uh, and if we are not activated, then we're going to do the exact same thing, but backwards. Do to do. Now when we do that, we're going to end up eventually getting a number that's greater than or less, that greater than one or less than zero, right? Okay. And we'll just keep going. Um, this timer, we want it to be in the scale where it's only ever between zero and one. So mm -hmm. like zero is totally invisible, one is totally shown, and it should never be outside of that because it doesn't matter. It's already okay. already done. Um, so we're going to take anim timer and we're just going to clamp it. And that's a super common math function. Uh, and it just takes it. If it's less than zero, it makes it zero. If it's greater than one, it makes it one. Okay, so clamp just defaults to zero between zero and one? So this is the clamp01 function. Oh, I see. Uh, okay. There's also just the regular clamp, and then you give it the minimum and the maximum. Okay. Uh, but we're just going to clamp it to zero one. That's super common operation, so they give you this helper function for it. Uh -huh. Now we have this animation timer that's going to go up and down based on whether or not we're activated, uh, and it'll never go past zero or one. Uh, so now... Uh, we need to check and see if we are completely uh, at, if we're like totally at zero like if we if we're finished animating mm -hmm. uh, if we can totally hide everything okay. like we don't need to write or anything at all um, I actually think that unity's UI system might be doing this same optimization in the next version uh, but I, I tried to download that and it crashed when I ran this project so we'll have to try <laughs> that again later uh, mm -hmm. and whatever it's you know, not a terrible thing to be thinking about this anyway. Uh, so, uh, basically we're going to be doing the same thing as before where we just turn on or off uh, these container objects, but this is going to be happening from this script we're writing instead of some menu manager. Mm -hmm. uh, so that means that each one of these things needs one more reference to uh, its, like, child container. Okay. Uh, and that one's just going to be a game object because we're going to be using that set active function, which is like turning this checkbox on or off. Okay. Uh, so we reference a game object, uh, and we're just going to have main container, and that's going to be our little thing there. And then each one of these needs to have its first child hooked into that. So here is one for who, and one here. Three and four. Mm -hmm. And four. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So now we have all those. So uh, we're at a point here where if uh, anim timer is exactly zero, uh, we can just turn everything off. Mm -hmm. Now, normally, if you have a floating point number, you don't want to say is this floating point number exactly equal to this other floating point number? Mm -hmm. 
um, because they're they're so like the the precision is such a such a tiny uh, eh. because they're very precise. You yeah, know, it's fickle. <laughs> yeah, they can be very very slightly off. Mm-hmm. Um, and even if you think that something is exactly zero, it might be something slightly different. Uh, but because of this clamp function, we know that there's a lot of like a very very common case where it's being set directly to zero. Mm-hmm. It's not like something minus itself or like whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, where it's getting set directly there, so we can we can actually rely on this being precisely zero, um, and zero is like a special uh, zero is a special number in floating point. Uh, there's only three special numbers that exist. No, I guess there's kind of four. There's zero, there's positive infinity, and there's negative infinity, and there's not a number which maybe counts as a special number, but kind of not. Okay. You know, <laughs> uh, but zero is special. Like it, it's not stored the way that the other floating point numbers are stored. It's just like this is the magic code that means it's exactly zero. Okay. Um, anyway, it, it makes it, <laughs> it, you know, it, it makes me feel more confident about <laughs> about checking for exactly that. Mm-hmm. Like something equals equals one is a horrible idea because like one, that number isn't even represented exactly. Anyway, whatever. Okay, so if it's zero, we're gonna take our main container and we're gonna turn it off. Uh, but we're only gonna do that. If uh, if it's already enabled, so if it's already disabled, we don't need to do anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not tremendously important uh, for this one, but for the other the other direction, uh, when it starts off and you're enabling it, then it can be kind of awkward uh, because there's certain functions that get fired when an object is goes from being disabled to enabled. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can accidentally call those like every frame if you're just doing this. So you have to kind of be careful about that. Okay, so we do the same thing here, except in reverse. So anytime that uh, our animation timer is exactly zero, then we can turn everything off Mm -hmm. any other time, even if it's in the middle of animating, whether it's up or down or whatever, then it's always gonna be showing. Mm -hmm. Um, So there is that so and we have this activated thing so if we look at one of these and we're going to turn off our um, actual menu for a sec so when we start here nothing is happening at all mm-hmm. uh, but if we go to our activator and hit activate it it should turn on yeah okay so now the timer is greater than zero so now if we turn this off, it shouldn't turn off immediately. It should turn off after a one second delay because that timer is counted up to one. Okay. So if we turn it off, then it'll count back down to zero. When it hits zero, then this turns uh, disabled again. Do Hey, <laughs> all right. All right. So there's a thing going on. Uh, and that's <laughs> a start. Uh, so now we can make this look a lot fancier, like really, really fast. <laughs> Because mm-hmm. we already have this list of transforms, mm-hmm. um, but before we do that, we're going to make a little reference list of sizes, mm-hmm. uh, so we can look at all of our objects that we're tracking, and we're going to store their original size, and then we can use that later on when we're animating them to make sure that they get back to where they started. Uh, basically, the the animation we're doing is they're just going to shrink down to zero and then okay. inflate back up. Um, so we need to remember where they started to make sure that they inflate to their actual intended size. Okay. Uh, so that's pretty easy. So we're just going to go through uh, our list. Um, for loop is super common in programming. You know, it's like do something a bunch of times. So we're doing it once for each item in this list. Okay. Uh, and we're going to take that guy. Uh, local scale. Uh, so local scale is part of the transform thing, and it's you know like. It's a scale. Okay. <laughs> yep. uh, so we're going to take... Is that the X, Y, and Z then? Yeah. Okay. So this is a vector three. Uh, this is a list of vector threes. Oh, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. an X, Y, Z coordinate. Okay. Um, so I'm setting this thing here, but I have to I have to initialize that array before we can actually set to it. Um, or else it'll complain about how it doesn't know how big it's supposed to be. So we first have to start here by making a new one of these. And the length of it is going to be one for each item in our other list. 
Uh, so we say, okay, we have a list that's got the same number of items as our list of rest, rect transforms. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we go through our list of rect transforms and, up, and uh, store each one of their sizes to this uh, little lookup. So now we have that for later. Okay. Uh, so now we need to animate. So I'm going to make a T variable up here. This is like a, just like a quick and dirty number, basically. Mm -hmm. um, there's a similar I up here, which is just like I'm doing some kind of loop, and I is kind of traditionally the number that most people use for like a quick loop. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very, very common to have more than one uh, loop like that in one function. So if mm -hmm. you do your initialization like that right here, which you can, mm -hmm. you can say, like this is a, a, a number that I'm making up just for this loop. Mm. Um, but then you, it's awkward later on. I, sure. <laughs> I honestly forget if you can do that and then do another one like that afterwards. Um, you, you may or may not be able to. I honestly don't even feel like checking. I just, mm -hmm. whatever. <laughs> I just, I'm totally in the habit that anytime it's like these kind of placeholder temporary things, yeah. it's put on the top. Anyway, T is another one that counts like that for me. And it's just like a zero to one number. Okay. Um, the most common time to end up using a T, which also should probably be a function at this point, but uh, whatever. Uh, smooth step. Yeah. So smooth step is one of my favorite little math functions, and it's magic. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go <laughs> into smooth step. <laughs> it's 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 pure magic. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're gonna say T is anim timer, our, our linear boring anim timer, uh, and then we're gonna take T and we're gonna apply smooth step to it which is that function, uh, 3t squared minus 2t cubed, uh, and that makes it smoother between 0 and 1. Mm. Um, and there's all kinds of cool properties to smooth step, like its derivative is symmetrical around 0 0.5, which is crazy. It's crazy that that happens. Uh, Math! <laughs> yeah, man. It, yeah, it, it isn't that fascinating? Just hear a bunch of words. Uh, <laughs> so we have, a, we have a number for t, and... Uh, we want to use this to scale all of our objects. Uh, actually, before we do that, we're going to try it without the smooth step so we can compare and contrast. Yeah. Uh, smooth step makes everything better. It makes audio transitions smoother. It makes uh, scaling look better. It makes uh, like an alpha fade look better. Mm -hmm. Like stuff that you wouldn't think you'd be able to tell. It still helps. Um, anyway, we have our T here, which is how close we are to being fully animated. Uh, we're going to go through our list of transforms again. Uh, we're going to apply a scale to all of them. So at the beginning, we're storing their original size. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to apply a new scale, which is based on their original size. Um, so we're going to say their new local scale is the original sizes, i, and that we, we already know that these uh, these references match because we, we set it up at the beginning mm -hmm. so that the, uh, the sizes thing is in the same order as our list of transforms. Okay. So we take the same one from that, uh, and we're just going to multiply it by t. So if t is 0, then it scale is 0. And if t is 1, then the scale is original sizes. Okay. Uh, bonk. So now, if we run that, I didn't initialize my i. So I have to put an i up here. Now I'll stop complaining about it. Doot. And then we can hit go. Oh, here I declared I, but never used it. <laughs> I have so many errors. I have so many warnings. The warnings are like, it's like, you know, hey, programmer, you should you should really consider doing something about this. <laughs> uh, you know, just saying. They don't necessarily, like, make bad things happen yet. <laughs> right, so it doesn't stop your program from compiling. Uh, but it is a likely mistake or could cause you a problem later or mm -hmm. you're using something that's outdated or stuff like that. Sure. Uh, I just... <laughs> a common thing, I think, for people to just not give a crap about that when they really, really should. <laughs> but, you know, you just go once in a while and clean everything up and then it's PC again. Okay, so we hit activated now. Hey! Whoa! So now it does a thing. Uh-huh. Uh, and this goes either direction and we can interrupt and it's fine, doesn't care. Uh, but you know how it looks looks really like stilted, uh, like it they all stop like, bang. Oh yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, like it's done. We're mm -hmm. there. Uh, this is why our smooth step is good. Now we can compare to this. Oh, I didn't do something. What did I not do? Oh. 
three T. Three F times uh, too many T's. Three F mm -hmm. times T. Oh my God! Yeah, somebody just had a heart attack. It's <laughs> 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 not smooth stuff. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> okay, so now if we hit the button, man, it's hey. a little nicer. So it, there's a little okay. bit of a little bit of a jilt now if you interrupt it, mm -hmm. right? Like it doesn't uh, it doesn't smooth that out. Mm -hmm. It's already in the middle of the function, so it's oh, I see. just right back up. Uh, but that's not going to happen tremendously often, possibly never for a lot of players. Uh, so whatever. So now this is okay. Mm -hmm. It's all right. But uh, we wanted to like go through the list and yeah, right. I wanted to go one at a time. Expand, yeah, one at a time. Yeah, sequential. So that's the word. We're going to do this a little bit differently. This T is going to show up somewhere different. Um, so, oh man, how are we going to explain this without drawing a picture? <laughs> okay, and now we are in Photoshop where we are going to attempt to draw a picture uh, of what we're doing. So, we have a... T oh, man. <laughs> Let's... Okay, Photoshop. All right. There we go. So we have a period of time, whew, which right. is this bar. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some number of, oh my god, uh, some number of things. So we're going to be dividing this up into some number of partitions. Mm -hmm. So if we have two, for instance, we have two partitions. Uh, if we have four of them, we'll have four partitions, mm -hmm. and we want to divide this up in a nice way. Now, I also feel like, though, that we should be trying to make these overlap. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't want, like, one at a time to, like, pop in the screen. That would take a while. Right. So, what is the nicest way for us to do that? Um, so, it seems like, basically, we just want this to be, like, staggered. So that this first one is actually like these two, and mm -hmm. the second one starts in like this, and then the third one starts in like this. Mm -hmm. So really, if we have five like this, if we have five like breakers, four partitions, then we have three items to fade in. So does that mean that we need one more partition than the number of items in the list? That seems correct to me. I can't dispute that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, because this is the same as if each one of them was only one block long, but there was one extra one. Okay. Uh, like if there were three, it'd be like one, two, three, and then there's one left over here. Mm -hmm. But because each one of them is two... Okay, yes, yeah, so that makes sense. So, we have a number of partitions that is the number of items in the list plus one. And we want to start a new one of them at the beginning of each of those intervals. Okay. Now, how is this different from, like, if you just decided to start the animations, like, a little bit later, and each animation was set on a certain, like, one second? Um, so, if we were doing an animation, uh, the if we are doing this with the, with the timeline, like, down here, with not showing up, oh, so I don't think selected... Well. Um, we would have one row for each of the items in the list. Mm -hmm. So you'd have two keyframes for each one of them, and then those keyframes would be staggered, like in a okay. stair-step kind of pattern. Uh, but we would have to do that kind of repetitive yeah, clicky so back and forth thing. Yeah, so avoid using the timeline. Yeah, like, you know, I figure already we're doing, we're streaming game development, so there's going to be some kind of quiet periods where we're just like, uh. <laughs> but uh, that one, that seemed like it would be pretty egregious. Just like, <laughs> back and forth, back and forth, back, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, okay, I think th I think this picture makes sense to me. <laughs> I have this notebook that's just full of these random doodles like this. It, it looks like it looks like Charlie Kelly's notebook in, uh, in Always Sunny. It's just pictures. <laughs> Dream journal. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Images and symbols. Um, that. <laughs> okay, so this n plus one thing seems like it makes sense to me. I, I'm. <laughs> Weirdly paranoid that I'm doing that wrong, uh, but I think that's just because we're recording a thing, so, sure. you know. We'll give it a shot. Yeah. Okay, so we need to divide our thing into partitions. So, the length of one of these blocks, 
um, do, 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 what do we call this? Partition length, chunk length, chunk length, whatever. Okay, so you're going to be one over something, uh, and that something is going to be transforms.length plus one. Uh, so if we have four items, there are five divisions, and each one of them is one fifth of one. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so there's that. So now we need to figure out uh, a start point and an end point for each of these things. So the first one needs to start at the beginning of the animation, and it needs to be done two-fifths of the way through it, if mm -hmm. there are four, right? Because it takes two chunks for one thing to animate fully. Mm -hmm. So it needs to be done in, in two chunks time. Uh, two chunks time! <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, let's see. What do we call this one? This is like the the start and end points in the timeline for the current item. Uh, so we'll say item start and item end. Item start T and item end T. Makes a little more sense. Uh, so this is going to be I times chunk length. So the first one starts at T equals zero. The second one starts at T equals one chunk. Mm -hmm. um, and the nt is going to be i plus 2 times chunk length so it's just two two skips ahead mm -hmm. um, so now we have a current t from 0 to 1 and then we have our start and end t's uh, which are somewhere between 0 and 1 mm -hmm. and we need to map uh, the bigger t into this smaller range okay Right? So we have this range that represents the animation, like the two keyframes, basically, mm -hmm. of the current item. Okay. So we need to figure out how far through those two keyframes we are. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're starting with just the regular T. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say, uh, what do we call this? We're going to just call this TT. Uh, it's a stupid name, but whatever. Mm -hmm. It's another T. Uh, and this is going to be our, OK, so we have our regular T. We're going to subtract the start time. Uh, so we're offsetting as if it was starting at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and then we need to check how far we th how far through it we are compared to the length of that current chunk. Uh, and that's going to be chunk length times 2, because we know that that's how they work. TT. Uh, so... Okay, so the first one, for example, we have i0. Mm -hmm. So item start t is going to be 0. Item end t is going to be 2 chunks, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so now if our t is counting through, and we have a value of 0.1, right? Uh, let's say there are 4 items total, so our chunk length is 1 fifth. Uh, so t is 0.1. Item start t is 0, so we have 0.1 divided by 2 chunk lengths, uh, so our chunk length is uh, uh, point f 0.2, so that's 0.4, so now we have 0.5 out of 0.4, and that sounds like it is already done, 0.5 out of 0.4. I honestly forgot where I started with that, so I don't even know if this example is helping me. But I just, <laughs> yeah, I just spaced there completely. I might have just said a bunch of shit that made no sense. Eh, you know, we're just going to do it and see yeah. what it does instead. That's uh, that's easier. So we're going to take our we're gonna take our T here and move it down. So we actually don't need that first T. Okay, this makes more sense then. We can get rid of our second TT, because we're not going to use that first one. This is actually anim timer, not T. Uh, and we're going to smooth step the individual uh, item timer and not the overall timer. Okay. Uh, I sort of doubt that's going to work. Now, th another problem we're going to have here is that because smooth step only works between 0 and 1, we have to clamp our T before we do that. Mm. Um, otherwise, it'll behave very strangely. Uh, it, like, goes up and then goes back down again. Mm -hmm. That function is only beautiful between 0 and 1. Uh Missing a letter or something. Item T equals. Uh, 
Okay, so now there's none of that. I have, I really don't know what this one's gonna do this time. I'm assuming it's not gonna do what I want because you know it's the first try, and I don't, I didn't think that through very hard. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Or it doesn't work exactly as we hope. <laughs> awesome. All right. So, uh, is that script working on all of the menus right now? Like, uh, I think it should be. One? So, let's go to this other one. Boop. Yeah. yeah so, there's that. And then here's this. Very cool. And they go out in the same order they come in. Is that okay? Or do we want that to be the other way around? See, I feel like they should go out from the top to the bottom yeah. so that the next one could come in early. Yeah, that'd be cool. That seems like it would be better. But these do look like they work. I just want to test this last one. Sick. Okay. Right now it looks better, but it also just takes longer to get between right, yeah. the menus. So we can also check out how to deal with that because that's very easy. So we have page menu activator. So... Uh, a little space here separate our uh our drag and drop hookup things from our just like number entering what is the space i've, I've never seen that function uh as so i'll show you in just a second when this okay. shows with the inspector it's it's just like a like an organizational thing oh i see um, okay it, it, it literally puts in a space between the like fields okay yeah you know? um but it shows it shows with the inspector and doesn't affect your actual game okay. when you're done um so now we need a duration for that uh that animation Capitalize that N. Boop, boop. So now down here we have uh, anim timer plus equals delta time and minus equals delta time. So it takes one second to get from zero to one. Mm -hmm. So if we want it to take half a second, what do we have to do? Divide it by two. Yeah. Woo! So this is a weird, unintuitive thing uh, that I, I, I don't know. It took me a very long time to feel comfortable doing this every time for some reason. That mm -hmm. just seems weird. But uh, if you're adding your delta time, you can take your you can take your delta time and divide it by your duration. Um, what was that called? Animation duration. Uh, and and when you do that, uh, you can kind of enter your numbers very intuitively. Uh, if you don't, if you do this, if you multiply instead, which is like the easier way to code it, like you normally think of multiplying stuff in cases like this mm -hmm. um especially because like multiplying is faster than dividing it's not really relevant often at this mm -hmm. point but you know it, it that it still lingers um people would generally rather multiply than divide mm -hmm. um and in this case it makes it much easier to look at your numbers and to be reading a duration instead of reading a speed because like if you put in a speed of three it means it'll take a third of a second and like yeah. There's an extra step to think about. It's much easier to do this duration stuff. So, dividing like that, very good answer. Mm -hmm. uh, and now, when we do this, I probably should have set a, a default. Uh, I didn't do that soon enough, though, so these are probably going to serialize. Yeah, so these are all serialized with a zero as a default. So, we'll just fix them really quick. So, we'll say 0.5, so it won't take half as long. So now, activate to do much faster. All right. And we can change this live, and it will still work. Awesome. <laughs> so okay. So that's a... Easter egg to slow the menus way down. <laughs> yeah, you have to hold the shift key <laughs> while you're... Uh, and if you hold if you hold control one, what, seven, eight, whatever... Mm -hmm. It turns the screen upside down. Yeah. <laughs> this is old Mac Easter egg. I think it was, what was it? It was like Control Option Command Eight, something like that. Mm -hmm. And it made all the colors in your screen inverted. Oh, okay. Yeah, there, there's some. I, I remember like you know so the computer good. lab. You know, like it was like <laughs> Windows Control Shift Up and Down, and it would like change the orientation yeah. of the display. And you push that button, like makes your monitor like, <laughs> like sneeze. Degas. Yeah, there we go. All right, so <laughs> after this very important discussion, uh, we are gonna, we're now going to switch back and use our uh, previous menu code, which is a big existing thing. Uh, we're only going to be changing a small piece of it, though, which is this part. Bonk. So right here, this is how we used to be doing our page switching. Okay. Um, 
this is the update loop, so this is firing every frame. Every time we update the screen, we do this stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is just controlling that menu and what it does. So it's tracking what state it's in, which is really just what page it's on. Mm -hmm. uh, and every time we update, we have to check what state are we in. And if we're on this one, then we have to turn off all these pages. If we're on this one, we have to turn off all these pages, except for this one. Okay. You know, so it's just one of those for all of them. So we're doing mm -hmm. the same thing here, except instead of turning on and off the game objects, we're just going to be turning on and off this checkbox. Okay. Uh, and then all the other stuff is already happening for us. It's already done. They mm -hmm. can take care of themselves. Uh, Lovely. So, first off, we need to we need to reference uh, those scripts. So we have these calibration group things, uh, calibration group, main menu group, custom race group, whatever. All these uh, these are all game objects, and we need to have uh, a different thing. I'm gonna see if this these names are used anywhere else. Okay, they're really only used right there. So I'm just gonna replace all of these. Uh, okay, so the calibration one, that one stands because that one is not part of this menu. That's like the previous thing. So these four, though, we are going to replace. And this is this is one of the things that I absolutely love in Sublime Text. That I can multi-select, oh, nice. edit all these things mm -hmm. at the same time. Now I forget what I call that menu page activator. This looks cool too. <laughs> yeah, incredibly satisfying. Typing four things at once. Yeah. Uh, so now we're going to get these other ones. Main menu, activator. Okay. So now we have all these other parts here. Okay. Alright, yeah. So I guess we're going to find all of our set actives. Do, 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 uh, we're going to start up here. Do, 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 Lots of set actives. There's a couple more down here, too. Let me start up on the period. Okay, and then also... That one. Oh, messed up my selection. Okay, <laughs> my God. VTV. Okay, so now we have all of these things selected, uh, and we are going to delete them. And these are going. Oh no, we're not going to delete them yet. We are going to deselect all the calibration ones because those are not relevant. Do 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 do. I swear this is going to save us a lot of time. <laughs> uh, okay, so now all of those. Okay, so now we're going to take all of those. We're going to delete the word group also. I'm going to go back to activator. Uh, and we're going to switch you to activated. And then we are going to get rid of that. Get rid of that. Boom. So now we have these true in this random place. We didn't mess that up. This is all still there. Calibration group is still present. Okay. Let's see what that did. And I kind of still want to do that. No, no errors. I still want to do that thing with uh, the order being reversed mm -hmm. when they're when they're disappearing. Although I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to possibly stare at that picture again. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's see what happens. Oh, null ref. So I have to reconnect all these things because I didn't hook them up. And then we have all these empty things mm -hmm. up here. So we have main activator, and then we have custom activator. Have replay activator, and then we have options activator. Bonk. Go again. Okay, no error that time. Come some right. stuff. Other track. Hey, hey. Go back. Load replay. Okay, yeah, so right now they're just flying all over each other. Right, yeah. So, what I think we should do. Oh, and that's just because of the order, yeah. Yeah, what I think we. One. one one part of this, uh, possibly on top of that other thing with the order changing, mm -hmm. um, we just need to make it so that the one that gets turned on is delayed a bit. Yeah. Um, so, we are going to put in an extra little thing here just to make it so that it delays if it notices that uh, it just got switched on. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 
we're gonna make another boolean. Uh, it's gonna be like activated, but it's going to represent the previous frame's uh, value for it. Okay. Old activated. So right here, uh, we're gonna set old activated equals activated. Uh, and I said this is the previous frame's value, which is weird because I'm setting it right here. Mm -hmm. um, but we're only gonna be using it above this, right? Oh, okay. So it's being used right here, oh, yeah, and then yeah. it gets stored for the next frame right after it's done with this first part of mm -hmm. this frame. And then it's not touched again until the beginning of the next time. Uh, so we have old activated equals activated. So if this one has changed, uh, this value and this value will be different, mm -hmm. uh, it, but only on the first frame, right? So if we're activated now uh, and old activated is not true, so if this is our first frame of being turned on, mm -hmm. uh, we are going to a uh, delay. So delay timer equals one. So, and we need to make that thing somewhere. Delay timer, this is just gonna be an extra timer for doing a separate like time count. Mm -hmm. uh, and this one is just gonna be a little bit of like pause before we start uh, start appearing. And we're not gonna do this when we're disappearing, only when, we're, when, only when we are appearing. So delay timer, and then animation duration. We're also going to give uh, a delay duration. Let's say that's 0.5. And down here, instead of saying instead of saying equals one, we're going to say equals delay duration. There we go. Uh, so now all of this stuff. So we're not going to increase animation timer on that first frame. We're mm -hmm. only going to increase later on. Um, and right here, we're going to make sure that delay timer is uh, less than zero. Um, actually, we're going to be opposite. And then we're going to have an else statement. Do, do, do. So if delay timer is greater than zero, we're not going to do any of the normal animation updating stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and instead, we're just going to count this down. Uh, and we're not doing a divide by duration here because we already set the uh, initial value to the duration instead. So mm -hmm. it'll count down one per second, and that's already a duration. Okay. Doo -doo. <clears throat> we have a thing. So now we need to go back in here and give you this delay duration, which I made 0.5 by default. Uh, I will say 0.25. So we'll wait for a quarter of a second before they show up. And that kind of matches the that staggering mm -hmm. thing from before, where it starts halfway through the previous one. Maybe that'll give us visible coherence. Probably not. Other track looks... A little better. A little minorly better. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we still That do doesn't pop in. What, what's going on there? No. Oh. That's weird. I don't remember if it was before either. Yeah, what's up with that? Okay, yeah, it definitely wasn't. I think this thing is just increasing. Oh, yeah, so... <laughs> that, was, that was pretty pretty stupid. Uh, oh, it has to reset back? or? Nah, this thing is just still counting. Uh it, it skips the first frame, but then it's, like, while this delay timer is still there, it's still counting on anim timer. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, that is... <laughs> so we're going to take this guy, and we're going to put it somewhere else. Doot. And it's going to be here instead. Like this part we don't need anymore. Okay. So now this animation timer counting stuff is happening inside of that that delay aware block. Mm -hmm. uh, we also need to move this guy down because he was part of that. Okay, so now we just do this previous activation check at the beginning and then all the other stuff is dependent on this delay timer. So that should fix that pop in. Uh, boop, boop, boop. Here's you. Oh, let me go back. These things. So we're still backwards, but it's not doing that awkward pop. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So, God, how <laughs> how do we do that? Oh man. Um, 
So which part are we trying to fix here? The the missing menu or the reversing the order thing? Uh, the, 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 I don't I don't think there's any menu missing right now, but yeah, there was seeing the same thing. I think so. Oh, and it only show up if you selected one, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the order thing is weird though because if you <laughs> if you started it going down mm-hmm. and then you hit this push it back, it would pop. Uh, but. I don't necessarily think anybody's going to be capable of doing that because the back button is always going to appear last. Hmm, yeah. So the previous one should already be done anyway. And this is all face movement too, so I don't think yeah. there's going to be any super fast clicking going on. Yep, so if you're if you're a, a face ninja, I mean, you can, <laughs> maybe you can pull it off, but it'll take some training. Uh, Okay, so I have to figure out how to do this part, though. So, what needs to change about this to make them switch order? Just picturing a ninja with, like, a super, like, huge neck. (laughs) Just ripped. (laughs) Oh, my God. What about face monks? They're even scarier. I I I feel like they're too earnest about it. I just... just, It makes me feel uncomfortable. Uh, (laughs) Now, I need to switch... The order of these things happening. Which, okay, so it's got to be right here. This I and this I plus two. Yeah. Oh my god, how does this work? So... (laughs) The start one. Let's look at this picture again. So we want to go like boop, boop, boop. This is one, two, three. And when we go back, we want to be doing the same thing, but with all of their inner animations flipped. Oh, that's so... I'm... I'm... (laughs) I want to be able to like stare at this hard enough to feel confident about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> maybe we can just try a couple. Good old, good old standby. Uh, this is what we call Monte Carlo when we don't want to sound stupid. But it's really just guess and check. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Monte Carlo is like the nice like programmer term for it. Yeah, I mean, that's nice programmer, mathematician, physicist. That's like real terms okay. for real science people. <laughs> uh, and it's a much more rigorous thing than what I'm actually doing, but okay. it's extremely fancy and academic guess and check. Um, that's not even supposed to be disparaging. It's a, it's a super valid. No, good yeah, stuff. no. I, yeah. I, I, <laughs> when I'm okay. writing music, half the half the time I'm just like throwing notes down and seeing if it works. Right. Okay, so we want to switch the order of these. So I think instead of I, we're gonna do trance. Forms. Oh my god, okay, so first of all we need to check if we're going up or down. Uh, so we're going to copy these lines. And we're going to make them zero. I'm just going to make that one. Okay, so you and you... Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. The multi-select is turning against me. Okay, so... <laughs> if... Uh, activated is true then we're going to do the regular thing and if activated is not true if we are disappearing then we are going to do this other thing instead so I is going to be replaced with transforms dot length minus (sighs) minus one minus I maybe it's minus two minus I I don't know we just want to reverse the order of the indexes. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's got to be minus one minus i. Because if you have if you have four items, three is the max index. So if we have four minus one is three, three minus i is zero. That makes sense to me. I think this might be right. Okay. Uh, minus one plus two looks kind of silly, but whatever. It. We're just gonna put it in. 
quotes are in parentheses so we can tell that it was supposed to be a thing for the sake of clarity. That probably doesn't look any more clear. <laughs> I don't care. But you know that you put those in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and at some point I will possibly have to pretend to remember. Um, now I have to go back. Every time I come back here, it's like, why is there a butt in <laughs> in my workspace? And I keep all tabbing to that one by accident. Okay, so we're checking that. What are you going to do? Oh, hey! <laughs> it's going to do it right. Man, I keep saying that it's not going to work the first yeah. time that it does. I hope that that doesn't seem intentional. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, that seems pretty good. Uh, it seems like we could use a little bit less of a delay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, since it's doing it in the right order now. Yeah, not quite as not quite as necessary. I give it point one five instead. Yeah. That back button seems like it's really low. But I think that's okay. Alright. Also, this this background. If you look I find if you look over to the sides it turns <laughs> like weirdly hypnotic. Uh, it starts like pulsing. It's like okay. <laughs> I haven't tried this in the headset yet. It's a different one over here. Oh. Uh, <laughs> this is our, our animated sign arrows material that we're using as a skybox right now because it's like the old school. It's just like, oh, you know, it's trippy background, guys. It's, mm-hmm. it's how we fill our content uh, until we have a nicer uh, nicer main menu setting. Mm-hmm. Or possibly forever. I don't know. Yeah. I, I like the way this looks. You know what I mean. Whatever. We'll see. <laughs> that's we'll a, see. Yeah, that's a, that's a polite way to put it. But, uh, you know, this is this stuff going on. Uh, this thing looks like it's kind of too low. Like, you have to look really far down to yeah. get back. Probably want to fix that at some point. Uh, also, I don't think that we did a, like, audio... Do we, is this audio synced to the video automatically? Do we need to yeah, do no, anything about synced, that? Yeah, no, it's synced. Yeah. Okay, it's all good. Yeah, that's, that was one of the um, advantages of going straight through the Elgato. Okay. Uh, well, I don't know. I, <laughs> that was kind of the stuff that I wanted to get done right cool. there. Uh, All right. Yeah. So I just want to be really clear. This wasn't meant to be a tutorial or anything. We're probably going to end up putting this online. <laughs> yeah. uh, if you were trying to yeah. follow this as a tutorial, I am deeply sorry. Uh, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah we, okay, we just want to get into, into some streaming and doing some more dev videos and uh, just being more public and show people what we're working on. So yep. it was kind of a test run of that. Yep. Options, but okay, I'm gonna do one more, one more run here. Yeah. Close out with something that's mm-hmm. not <laughs> looking at a menu. Oh, you have to do just run through it twice so you can see a ghost. Oh yeah, you can see the leaderboard too. Yeah, we haven't got a video of the ghosts up yet. Yeah. Okay, two runs really quick. So we're gonna do a slower one and then a faster one. So that oh, it's gonna run really slow. My laptop is not. Uh, <laughs> Not happy about this. I was, I was full screen. <laughs> surprised at how like all the shadows and stuff are looking pretty nice. And I realized how small. It's yeah, right. Now. <laughs> right. Super small and only once. Ooh, nice. Huge, oh. huge advantage over. Oh the other. yeah. <laughs> this, this game is somewhat optimized. It's like level of detail and combines distant objects into like, master objects and stuff like that. But it's not done yet, and I'm pretty worried about how it's going to perform in a headset for people's computers. It seems like it's acceptable for now, but it definitely could be better. Mm-hmm. The other little animations here is kind of similar style. Mm-hmm. The other one that's part of why I went for this one in the main menu is already kind of went for this easy thing, and this other part of it was just like things inflate. Yeah. Uh, so we can kind of make it match a bit, even though they're both easy. And, you know, bonus points just for having them be the same thing. Our ghost on the side here. Oh, jeez. I said I was gonna do it faster the second time. Oh, okay. Fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> See, I thought you were doing it faster on the first time. Yeah, I think I said that and then just immediately forgot that I was supposed to be doing it. Uh, you know. There's so many checkpoints. This track is like a little bit short. Uh, and the checkpoint count is pretty high everywhere. Uh, that kind of affects how. How airborne you're able to be over the course of the map. Because if there's more checkpoints, you're a little more restrained. You have to be down far enough to grab them. Uh, the tracks also tend to be a bit more spirally than this one. That's yeah. Generating. Anyway, so now we have two runs here, so we can see our, our comparison. We didn't do 
quite as well as that first time. If we load a replay from one of our friends, their lists also show up here. Uh, right now it only shows the top, I think, 8 or 10. Uh, we might need to make it so it scrolls down and you can see it. I feel like it might actually be kind of satisfying just to have it like, oh man, I didn't even get onto the board yet. Like, oh, but this time I did. Like, this is like, a, I don't know, there's like a thing there. Maybe some middle ground where it's like, these are the ones that are highlighted and then like there's a break and then it shows you like, these are the top eight and then your number 15. Uh -huh. I also um, like those, those like really big like leaderboards and you kind of like this zooms down to where you are. Yeah. You can kind of see. Yeah, I mean, I figured that type of stuff's gonna come in once we're doing online. Yeah, reports. exactly. So, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so I don't, I don't really know about that quite yet. For the moment, it seems like people. I expect people will probably have, you know, ten or twenty replays mm -hmm. in the thing. Uh, although, if I say that, oh jeez, if I say that, people will probably end up with a shitload more than that. <laughs> totally wrong expectations. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's so bad. Okay, these gazebos are finally big enough to be comfortable now. They were. Way too small for a long time, and it was annoying. Yeah. Shit, trying to fight for him. Oh my god. The strategy ended up being like trying to brush next to them. Yeah, as it's well. so like much, the... so much better to do it that way. <laughs> we can't hear it right now, but there's like whooshy noises when you're, when you're going past these buildings and stuff, uh, which we're super happy about. Yeah. There's another video on our YouTube channel. It's just like testing out that feature. In third place that time. I do better. I'm, like kicking in my. Competitiveness, you know, I'm praising myself. But, uh, we haven't even seen the ghost yet. Yeah, did he pop in and disappear? Last time ahead of him. Ooh, uh, <laughs> I was gonna say boost, and then I hit a wall. Oh, there goes the guy. Oh, oh no! no. off in the distance all smug. Ah, <laughs> oh, look at him, there he goes. <laughs> oh, I think I need help. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh man. <laughs> At first one. Mm -hmm. Slow run. <laughs> Beat all my other ones. <laughs> uh, so just, just uh, do another run and just like kind of stop at the finish line, or starting line, so we can just kind of see what happens. Oh, alright. We're gonna start extra slow here, actually, so we can see this tutorial stuff. So if you if you land oh, on top hey, of this platform here, yeah, you get this this little pop up that tells you how to play. Uh, I'm playing with a keyboard though, so it's not not relevant to me right now. But you know, for for using VR, people don't want to use a keyboard because you can't see the buttons and it's awful to tell them like, okay, now find the H key. Yeah. It's like oh. We do a lot of hand holding. Uh, we we didn't have to do a lot of hand holding when we were demoing these things. Just yeah, keyboard. absolutely, right. It's just like it's necessary. Uh, so we're trying to figure out how to make this stuff as as easy as possible to understand, even if you can't see your hands. Um, so we have this this uh, this controller that is not labeled with button names. And some people, you know, you hand an Xbox controller and say push X, and they go what? <laughs> it doesn't help then, you know. Mm -hmm. There's no easy way to say it. And you start going into all this like, well, push the left face a button, and it's like a left stick. No, uh. So we just do, we're doing all of our controls with these pictures. It's always a full controller with something highlighted. So even if you don't know what the layout is, it's just you know, here's a diagram. Um, you guys. Oh, <laughs> going right. past again. Yep, yep, yep. We're gonna go back to the beginning. All right. Oh my god. There's that again. Shh. Okay, so we're gonna go up to the start here, and as soon as you cross the starting line is when the ghosts spawn. And the race yeah. <laughs> Fly away. <laughs> A little hard to see right now. Uh, one of the last things we're putting in before we're ready for early sales is uh, customizable replays. So you can pick your, pick your trail type and color and all that jazz. Actually, probably just that jazz. Yeah, just, just that jazz. <laughs> <laughs> No other jazz. Uh, maybe some swing. Um, there he goes. So yeah, I don't know. This, this, all this stuff's in varying states of doneness, but uh, overall, we're getting close to a point where there's enough stuff that you know people might want to try it out. And lots of lots of VR content right now is pretty rough. Uh, you know, because it's so new and nobody really knows what's what it's good for yet. And it, we don't really know how to do it right or wrong or whatever. There's all kinds of, mm -hmm. kind of disagreeing guidelines. Like I see very commonly that people shouldn't be uh, people. Should, people don't want to be moving faster than a like a walking or a jogging pace. 
and we are obviously not. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, uh... <laughs> Yeah, so we're doing a pack of four different games, so we can mm-hmm. kind of explore different things and also give people like different options within the same game, you know, like for different kind of experiences. So this one's really fast. Uh, this is definitely like the fastest that we've got. Right. Yeah. Um, one of them's a you know on rails roller coaster kind of music video. Um, then you know there's there's a walking like locomotion one. Uh, so we're kind of just giving different people. Different options. Yep, <laughs> stuff you can try. Um, I don't know how appropriate it is for it right now, but at some point, you know, I figure this game can have kind of different levels of intensity. So when you first pick it up, you can play it kind of in a kind of a casual, relaxed way. Mm-hmm. You know, if you have like, if you're okay with the motion sickness stuff, but like, you know, you can kind of build your way up and whatnot. Uh, I think that that's going to be a thing that people want to do. It's possible that nobody will want to do that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, we don't really know what the standards are going to be yet. So, mm-hmm. it's a crapshoot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, it seems like, you know, people we've tested this with, they seem to enjoy it. We've tried it with a lot of different people of different ages and all that jazz. More more jazz. So much jazz. <laughs> I'm so stuck on that phrase. Uh, you know, we tried it with a bunch of people. It seems like people in general have enjoyed it. Uh, we found... Like one or two people who were like, okay, like I'm getting motion sick. And mm-hmm. that actually wasn't even with this game. That was one where you just walk around. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, there's there's still stuff to figure out. Mm-hmm. We're still excited to try that. This menu is doing what I want it to. I think it took about an hour, right? Is it going to take about an hour? It's like four yep. o'clock. Yep. Hello. All uh, right, so we will <laughs> go ahead and end here. Yeah, cut it off. Uh, I guess we will see you next time or Ew. something. <laughs> 2D Radio. Oh. Thank you for listening.